Hi everyone, so it's time for yet another tip of the week and um, this week I'd like to go back and talk about something that's kind of basic but yet very important to understand and that's how we deal with color in Toon Boom products. Um, and so this applies whether you're looking at Animate, Animate Pro or Harmony. Uh, the color is a little bit different the way it's done in Storyboard Pro so you don't really need to worry about color in the same sense when you're dealing with Storyboard Pro. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started by opening up Animate, um, as you can see here on my window. And Animate comes loaded in with a palette that has a bunch of colors in it already. Um, as you can see here, it's got 120 colors in it to begin with. And what a lot of people do when they start working in Animate is they just start taking whatever color they want, like, I don't know, I'm going to draw a character that has some orange hair, so there's my orange hair and I can you know paint it in or whatever and um, you know maybe I want to have another drawing layer and on this drawing layer I want to have a head so I'm going to choose a skin color and draw with it um, and so let's just ignore what I'm drawing and focus on the colors so I'm just going to create a couple of different color swatches in here and let's just put a few recognizable ones so the way that we deal with color is each one of the colors in our color palette has an ID number associated with it under the hood of the software. And um, when we paint with these colors, what we do is we remember the regions that were painted with those colors. And so let's say, for example, on this drawing, I've got this kind of teal blue color. And if I reuse that teal blue color on multiple different frames here in the timeline, so if I scroll through and check out those frames, um, then what it does is on each frame that I painted it remembers the color and the color ID of the color that I painted it with. So the reason that this is useful is that I can go back at any time, double click on the color, and I can change the color. And oops, let me just grab that teal color again. So you see if I change the color, you can see the color updating as I change it in the camera view directly. And this is important to understand because sometimes what people do is they they want to go back later on and they want to change colors on certain parts of images. And let's say if you've got your black that you've drawn all your lines with and then you might have another black that you drew the you know the hair of your of your character with and then you want to go back and change the black of the line you won't be able to change it independently because you're using the same color ID. So if you change the color of the line, it's going to change that color of that hair as well. So you need to understand that um, in order to be able to work effectively in the software. And usually what most people do um, when they're working at a professional level is they'll take use of the color palette concept. So you can see here there's a show palette list view. And when you show the palettes, then you can see what the palettes are in your scene. And by default, there is one color um, palette in there that will have the same name as your scene. So if you want to be smart about organizing your palettes, you should create a new character or a new palette for each character. And then in that color palette, you want to define the colors that you want to use for that character. And I usually like to click on the value slider here because I find that the easiest one for me to understand. And so you can start to define you know, what the skin color is going to be, what their eye color is going to be, what their hair color is going to be. And then what's also a good idea is to go back and double click on the color there and label it properly so that you know what it is. Because there might be some cases where you want to have two of the same color, but you want to use it for different things. So for example, I might want it with my black selected, I might want to duplicate it by just hitting the plus sign. And now I've got a new color with a new color ID, but I might want to use this one instead for, I don't know, the pupils of the eye. So now I can have two separated colors. They have the same RGB value, you know, but they have a different color ID associated with them. So if I ever want to go back and change the color of one of them, um, you'll see that it's going to update only on the one that I drew with the line and not with the pupil. So looks like I drew them both with the pupil color there, but if I had one that was separate, I can now adjust that separate even if the RGB values are the same. So that's the first important concept to understand. 
Now, when you move from Animate to Animate Pro or Harmony, Animate Pro and Harmony by default only have a very small default palette loaded in there. And usually the reason for this is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, most people are going to create their own color palettes. And this is particularly important when you are, you know, going to be using character templates. So let's say, for example, character one, and, you know, you're, you're drawing with your colors in character one. And then you might want to go back later and um, make another character. So let's just, let's pretend that these are all the colors from character one here. Now if you want to go back and make another character, you don't want to just use the same character palette or else you're going to override both characters when you make changes. So the best thing to do is if you want to make a new character but you want them to be almost the same, you should select this color palette and then duplicate it. The difference between a clone and a duplicate is that a clone is going to create a copy of that color palette but it will retain the information about the color ID and a duplicate is going to copy all of the colors but you won't use that you won't have that color ID information anymore so they'll be completely separate so if you want to make a new character let's say this is going to be character 2 then you want to go ahead and make them completely separate that way if you want to go back and change one of those colors it's not going to change the color in the original. If I did something instead where I take the, the palette and I clone it, I won't have to repaint my character at this point. Let's say character 3. But if I go back and change one of the colors and I update it on here, you see it's updating on character 1. It's updating on the original palette. Um, sorry, it's updating on the original drawing, not on the palette. You select which palette you want to use for that character. Now when this starts to become a bit tricky is when you're using templates because when you create a template, like if I take this drawing, let's pretend this is my character, so let's call this character one. If I go and I create, um, you know, let's just create a new library in here, a new folder. Okay, so I can stick this in my new folder. Now if I create a character template out of this one, Sorry, let's just drag this guy in here. There we go. Um, if I create my character template out of there and then I copy this character template, which is sometimes what some people do if they want to have two characters that look really similar but maybe you want them to have different clothes or something like that. If I go back and I edit character two, or you know, character one underscore one in this case, It's just going to take a second here to open up. So, all right, so now I've got my character in here, and I can check out what's going on in my color tab if I select my drawing. And I've still got all the same, I've got the same color palettes that I did in the original one. And it uses the same IDs as the original one. So, but let's just say, for example, if I stick with that character one, and I make a change, so let's say I'm going to make this orange and I can save this template and close it and yes it gives me a warning because if I change the structure I won't be able to use it as an action template which I went over a little while ago and let's do the same edit template on the first um, character I'm going to edit exactly the same color and hopefully this will become clear when I do it what it's doing and why it's doing it so, okay, so now if I take a look in my color view and I'll just select the drawing that I want to look at, I'm going to get rid of all of the color palettes except for, whoops, undo that, except for character one. And in this case, now I'll leave it pink. So I've got one that's pink and I've got one that's orange. And now I can save and close that template. All right, so now let's say I'm going to create a new scene and in this scene I'm going to bring the two characters into my scene and I know I'm representing a character by a squiggle and I apologize for that but hopefully you can get the idea when I do this alright so 
what I'm doing now is I'm just creating a totally blank scene and let's say for example I want to bring in those two characters that I did there. I can bring in character one and my drawing is pink. But if I bring in character two and I let's say offset those so I can check out what's going on. Do you see how both of those are now sharing the same palette? You remember when we looked inside the template the template of one was pink and then the template of the other was this orangey red. But when I bring them in, they're both sharing the same color palette. They share the same color ID. So it's not going to make a copy of this color palette. It's going to share it, which means that you can only change one at a time here. Now sometimes people do this and then they only realize after the fact, whoops, I shared the same character um, color palette and what you can do as a workaround uh, is you can clone the palette, because remember cloning will keep that information about the, the colors. And then you can create a, um, you know, change, make the change on one of them. And then you can use an effect, and in this case I can use my color override effect to fix this. So I've got my characters in there, and I'll just go ahead and drag in my color override. And now in my color override I can choose which palette I want to use so I can use the clone on one of these guys and um, and then now you can see that they're separated I've got the two different ones in there but this is a fix for if you've done it wrong so if you want to do it right remember if you want to do it correctly you want to make sure that even when you're working in a template that you duplicate your color palette and that you use different colors that way they're not sharing the same color ID so hopefully that cleared up a little bit of confusion about how color works in our products and let me know if you guys have any questions. Okay, bye!